One fine afternoon in 1980, a little girl named Violet wanders on her own while camping with her family in Florida woods. She stumbles across a singing woman who introduces herself as Rose, the hat, and within no time, she charms Violet with her little magic tricks. Violet feels something amiss when she notices people looking at them from afar and tries to go back to her family. But Rose tells her that those people are her friends and grabs hold of Violet's hand to make her stay. As she tells Violet she's a special little thing, the people gather to surround her. On the other hand, little Dan Torrance is still suffering from the ordeal that took place in the Overlook Hotel. The old ghost lady of room 237 from a few months ago still haunts him in Florida. His mother is concerned because Danny has not spoken a word since the Overlook incident. Dan has a unique power that he calls the Shine, and with his power he can telepathically communicate with the spirit of Dick Halloran. Dick explains that the darkest things are the hungriest and that they eat what shines, so the best way to defend against them is to use their shining ability against them. He then shows Dan the box and tells him about the trick that he has learned from his grandmother, and that is to trap the ghost in the box, the boxes which he should build in his mind. That night, Dan takes care of the bathtub ghost and traps her in the box of his mind, and ever since that day, he begins talking normally. Fast forward to 31 years later, Dan is living in New Jersey after his mother's death. He's grown to be an alcoholic man just like his father. One morning, he wakes up beside a random woman he met at the bar last night. Dan tries to leave her apartment before she wakes up but finds that he doesn't have a single penny. Dan knows that he's hit the bottom rock when he's forced to steal money from the woman's purse, and just as he's about to leave, a toddler from the other room comes looking for his mommy. Turns out his one-night stand is not just a drug addict, but also a single mother. Somewhere in New York, a teenager named Andy meets up with an older man from an online dating app in a movie theater. This sweet-looking girl is not what she seems to be. She's also, in fact, a special kid. Andy can hypnotize people into doing things to teach these prying predators a lesson. She not only empties their pockets, but also leaves a signature snake bite mark on their faces. This earns her the nickname of Snakebite Andy. However, such a talent has not gone unnoticed by the true knot. True Knot is a nomadic cult of psychics led by Rose the Hat and consists of seemingly non-threatening members. However, they feed on the essence or steam of the special kids, which is released after immense pain and fear, ultimately resulting in the death of the victim. Rose promises Andy that she can eat well, stay young, and live long, and invites her to join their cult. And later that night at the beach, the cult performs a ritual to let Andy into the cult, and have her a taste of violet steam, which has been preserved in a canister. Meanwhile, little Abra is celebrating her fifth birthday with her friends and family in New Hampshire. As they're enjoying a magic show, Abra claims that she can do it as well. So later that day, she demonstrates a little peek of her magic to her parents, but unfortunately, it garners unwanted attention from Rose and Dan. Around the same time, we see Dan, who has been struggling with his life. He travels to Fraser, New Hampshire, determined to make a fresh start. There, Dan is quickly befriended by a manager of the town's small amusement park named Billy Freeman. The manager helps Dan to rent a place and also joins him in an Alcoholics Anonymous program. Through the program, Dan comes to know Dr. John Dalton and lands an orderly job at the hospice. At work, Dan befriends Azriel, a cat known to sit on a patient's bed who is going to die. One day while Dan is working, Azriel enters the room of an elderly man. Dan goes to retrieve the cat, but the old man in the bed knows that his time has come. Initially, he appears frightened, but Dan calms him down by telepathically reassuring him that dying is a natural process. Shortly after, the man peacefully passes away, and using his shine to comfort the dying patients, Dan earns himself the nickname of Dr. Sleep. That night when Dan comes back home, he's greeted by hello written on the wall by a random person. As a response, he writes back hi, and seeing this, little Abra goes to sleep with a sweet giggle. Eight years later, Dan's completely sober and stands in front of Alcoholics Anonymous to share his experience. He talks about how his father's drinking habits were passed on to him unknowingly, and during this time, he and Abra have maintained a unique method of communication. On the other side, the true knot has been struggling to find a 
proper feed. Rose's partner, Crow Daddy, tells her that there have been lesser kids with quality steam these days, though he's not sure if it's due to the advancement in technology. On his request, Rose opens up a steam canister for the sake of his crew and allows them to revive. Soon, Crow Daddy detects a presence of steam in Iowa, and soon a young baseball player named Bradley Trevor is effortlessly persuaded to join them in their van by Andy. This kidnapped boy is taken to a faraway secluded place where he's mistreated and ultimately killed by the true knot for steam. Meanwhile, Bradley's plea for help is sensed by Abra, who begins to scream to stop it. Rose also feels the presence of someone strong peeking at them and refers to her as a looker. At the same time, Abra alerts Dan about the death of the baseball boy by writing murder on his wall. Now, after finishing off the boy, the true knot buries Bradley's body and his baseball glove in the same place. Rose tells Crow Daddy that they have a looker who is stronger in terms of power and that they need to find her as soon as possible. The next day at school, Abra surfs the internet and finds out information about Bradley and prints it out. When she touches his picture, she has a vision of the route taken by the True Knot to kidnap Bradley. Furthermore, she also visualizes how they killed and buried him afterward. When Abra stands by the window and concentrates on her power, she projects her consciousness across the country and follows Rose in the supermarket. However, she's soon caught by Rose, who in turn tries to infiltrate Abra's head. Now, Abra strongly expels Rose out of her mind, which not just sends Rose to the ground, but also Dan collapses with a nosebleed. Then, Rose comes back and informs Crow Daddy that the Looker has this enormous steam and they need to have her at any cost. The next day, Abra's mom drops her at school, but she skips her classes and travels to Fraser to meet Dan. After they talk about their shine, Abra gives him the printout and tells him that the boy shined too, but his shine was eaten by a group of people. She claims that she can find Bradley's body by tracking his glove and asks for Dan's help. However, Dan rejects the idea and tells her not to provoke the group and to stay low without attracting their attention or else they would come back for her. Later that night, Dan's old friend Dick comes to visit at the hospice. Immediately, Dick warns him of the consequences if the True Knot gets their hands on Abra and tells Dan to protect her. At night, Rose meditates and searches for Abra. Once she projects her consciousness, she tries to get into Abra's head, but she becomes impatient and ends up getting trapped in the girl's head. Abra not only infiltrates her mind, but also manages to physically injure her. With this, Rose is thrown back to her original place. She's agitated on her arrival, but another bad news awaits her. Grandpa Flick, an elderly member of the cult, is too weak to keep going and is in a painful condition, so the other members absorb his steam as he vanishes. This shows that true knots can live a long life as long as they get to eat, but they are not immortal. Meanwhile, Abra communicates with Dan to let him know that she's gotten into Rose's head and hurt her, so Dan decides to work together with her to bring down the True Knot cult. He immediately goes to Billy to seek his help. Dan and Billy ride the car as Abra telepathically guide them to the site where the boy has been buried. Soon, they arrive at the site and dig up the shallow burial to find Bradley's corpse and his glove. Meanwhile, the True Knot is about to move to a new location now that Abra knows about them, and since Rose has been tagged by Abra, Crow Daddy asks her to stay back, as she might put the group in danger. On top of that, Crow Daddy claims that he is his own way to deal with Abra if she tries to pull a trick on him. On their way back, Dan instructs Abra to disclose her power and their current situation to her parents. But when Dan and Billy stop by Abra's house in the morning, her dad misunderstands Dan for a creep who's trying to mess with his daughter. With this, Abra has no other option but to telepathically show her father Bradley's unfortunate end. Eventually, after her father calms down, Abra tracks the group's location with the help of Bradley's glove, which was briefly worn by a member of that group. Then, without getting noticed, Abra appears inside the group's van and deduces their destination. However, she informs Dan that she doesn't see Rose with them. Now, using Abra as bait, Dan and Billy lure the group into the woods. But when Andy tries to inject Abra with an unknown substance, they find out they have been tricked and it's just a stuffed animal. Just then, Billy and Dan start shooting at them from behind the trees. They almost had everyone, but unfortunately, the dying Andy hypnotizes Billy into killing himself. Instantly, all the dead True Knot members turn into a fine dust. 
Meanwhile, when the remaining members want to chase behind Dan, Crow Daddy has gone to Abra's place, and after killing Abra's dad, he injects her with sedative and kidnaps her. Later, Crow Daddy reveals that Abra's been heavily medicated and warns her not to try any tricks. The poor girl then breaks into tears when she finds out about her dad's death. Moments later, Dan rushes to Abra's place to find her dad's lifeless body, so he helplessly returns back to his own apartment. He tries communicating to Abra, and after numerous attempts, he finally sees the girl in the car. Then, without alerting Crow Daddy, Dan possesses Abra, and before Daddy could try anything, the possessed Abra crashes the car into a tree. With this, Abra loses her connection with Dan, however, she makes Crow's death as painful as possible. Just then, as Abra's walking on the dark road, Rose projects herself in front of the girl, but Abra simply ignores her and passes right through her. Losing her husband in such a horrific way, Rose gets infuriated and absorbs all the reserved steam from the canisters. And in a matter of seconds, all her wounds are healed and her power multiplies. The next day, Dan comes to get Abra. They're on the way to the Overlook Hotel in Colorado when Abra receives a call from her distressed mother. She tells Abra that finding her husband dead and her daughter missing made her worried sick. But Abra hangs up the call after telling her mother that she loves her, and she asks Dan to call her mother once everything ends. Crossing the snowy mountains, they arrive at the Overlook Hotel, and before Dan goes inside the hotel all alone, he instructs Abra to sit inside the car and watch out for Rose. Now Dan walks through the hotel where his lifelong trauma first started. As soon as he enters the hotel, he goes to the boiler room and operates all the machines at their maximum limit. Certain memories flash back in his eyes. While walking past the rooms, he then arrives at the bar where the bartender, Lloyd, offers him a drink. Dan keeps on talking about him and his mother moving to Florida, and how he knows his mother is going to die, occasionally addressing Lloyd as his father. Lloyd has a striking resemblance to Jack, Dan's father, but the man insists that he is just Lloyd, a bartender. Just then, Abra informs him about Rose's arrival, so Dan immediately brings her back to the hotel. But a few moments later, they cross paths against Rose, and it is her first time meeting Dan. She realizes that he's the one who killed her crow daddy. But before she can react, Dan traps her in an icy maze. Taking full advantage of their location, Abra injures Rose's leg. However, Rose soon captures the little girl, and just when Dan's about to lock her in the box, Rose realizes it to be a trap and breaks free. Next, Rose tells him that they should have met years ago when he was shining brightly, and while walking towards him, she makes an offer for him to join their cult. But Dan is not tempted by her offer and swings the axe in his hand. But Rose casually reads his move, throwing him down the flight of stairs. Clearly, Rose overpowers him with her newfound abilities, and while choking Dan, she presses on his injured leg to release the steam. Then Rose looks into his mind and finds the boxes, and when she asks what lies inside them, Dan opens the boxes to release the starving ghosts who begin torturing Rose and absorbs all of her steam. Now, Rose is eventually killed, and once done with her, the horde of ghosts turns to Dan. He tries locking them all into the boxes, but Dan is unable to concentrate, so they all pounce on him. Meanwhile, Abra's wandering the hotel sees the twin ghost blocking her way. She instantly escapes and finds a half-possessed Dan chasing her with the axe in his hand, and with her path being blocked by another ghost, she enters room 237. Once inside, Abra is greeted by the bathtub lady ghost and the possessed Dan also barges in. Immediately, the possessed Dan tries to strike her with the axe, but the real Dan stops himself from doing so within. With this, Abra gently grabs his hand and brings the real Dan back to his body. Now, Dan tells Abra to run away and tells her that he will follow her. Then he runs into the boiler room, gains control over his body as the spirit of the hotel tries to make him deactivate the machine. At the same time, Dan notices the flame caught in the machine, growing every second. And with this, the vision of his young mother comforting little Dan appears before his eyes. On the other hand, Abra watches the hotel burn, still praying for Dan to come out. A few days later, Abra's in her bedroom having a conversation with Dan's spirit, who tells her to keep on shining and be the way she is. Just then, Abra's mother comes in and asks who she's talking to. 
Abra replies, no one, but she immediately admits talking to Dan. On top of that, she tells her mother that both Dan and her father are okay and are doing good. Abra's mother gets a little concerned, but does not seem to have a problem with her power. After her mother heads downstairs, Abra steps into the bathroom and is confronted by the bathtub ghost. However, it's evident that Abra is prepared to face the ghost head on. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching.